everyone, and welcome to Business Boot Camp. I'm Christy Wright, and I'm going to give you the practical steps you want and the tough love truth you need to succeed in your business. And I am so excited about today because for the first time here on the Business Boot Camp show, I have a guest, and not just any guest, the GOAT, okay? New York Times bestselling author, host of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast, and my very good friend, new Nashville local, Amy Porterfield. Amy, thanks for being here. Well, hello, my friend. Thanks for having me. You know what I thought about before you came here? We have been on each other's shows multiple times. Yes. Never in person. Never. This is like, I should have brought champagne. I know. This is so fun. (laughs) I love it. You're now here in Nashville. And so we get to be in person. I'm so excited. So we are talking about courses today. And this is something that I love to teach my audience all of the ways they can make money. Yes. You also love to teach this. Absolutely. Through your podcast and all of your work. And so I want to start by just a quick story that will just set us up for day. Okay. Okay. That can kind of set the table. So I'll leave Ramsey. I called you after that. It was terrifying. We've all we've all talked about it. We've had therapy <laughs> sessions about it. It was very, very scary to yes. walk away from everything. Not unlike how you had to with yes. Tony Robbins and everything you did. And so many of us have been called out of corporate America or a season, a great organization to do our own thing. And it's scary. And so I remember it was fall of 22. Yes. And I created my first course by myself. And I'd created courses at Ramsey. That's real different. Way when different. you got a safety net. Absolutely. And a yes. team and all the people. And so I'm, you know, I'm excited. But I'm like, I know I know how to do this. I create the course. It's training speakers. It's called Stop Winging It. I still sell that course. But it's just, it's nerve wracking because I'm launching a new thing. Yes. And, and you've got this fear of like, can I do this? Will they still like me post Ramsey? Will this work? Will they trust me in speaking when I've only been doing business? And I launched that course. And Amy, I made more in one day from that course on day one than I had made in other years in That's my business. my most favorite thing. And I was mm-hmm. like, Am I going to get arrested? Did right? I do something illegal? Totally. And yes. so it was this mind-blowing moment that taught me the power of courses. Yes. And I share that because I want my audience to understand the power of courses. Yes. And no one knows this better than you. So let's just start by helping people understand this is not just for me, Christy Wright, or for you, Amy Porterfield. This can be for anyone. So how, I've got a lot of business owners, like we were talking about, that have brick and mortar stores, service-based, online-based, yes. product-based, and so on. How does someone know if they should even think about creating a course? Because immediately when they hear me say, th- say that, they might dismiss it and go, yes. well, that's you, Christy, you've been doing this. That's not me. How does someone know if a course is a good fit for their business? I love this question. And I think we should start out with the power of courses. Yeah. Why are they so powerful? Yeah. Because when you understand that, you start to see how it might work its way into your business. Yeah. So the number one reason I teach people how to create digital courses is I feel is that it gives you more freedom in the business that you have. So whether you have a brick and mortar or a one-on-one coaching, consulting, or a service-based business, a course is one to many. Yeah. And a lot of people I work with, they have clients, They are trading time for dollars and they have reached a ceiling. There's only so much money you can make when you are a service-based business if you are doing it alone. And I work with a lot lot of solopreneurs. So knowing that a course can give you more freedom, bring an additional stream of revenue, and also put you on the map as an expert out into the world and it reaches so much farther than some of the other things that we can be doing and making money. So when you start to think about that, one of the questions to ask yourself is, do you want that? Do you want more freedom? Are you looking for additional stream of revenue? Are you looking for a way to serve more people? And do you want to do it in a way that you're not always starting from scratch? So this is the power of a course. You create it once and you can launch it over and over again. That course you created that made so much money, you get to launch it again uh, live or evergreen, like automated, whatever you want. So first, we've got to think about why is a course so powerful? So those are some of the, the beginning ways to look at it. Now, well, and I also, I think what you said is really powerful that I just want to echo. So many people feel stuck on the dollar per hour treadmill. Yes. Especially in the service-based business, but even product-based business. If they're not physically online coaching, if they're not physically teaching a fitness class, yes. if they're not physically sewing the quilt, whatever the thing is, then they're not making money. So maternity leave, vacation, oh, you get yes. sick, then you're not making any money. And so a course, and I love how you said an additional stream of revenue. Yes it can give you more stability where you can actually take time off. What a concept. (laughs) I love that you brought up taking time off. I work with a lot of moms and maternity leave or just life happens. And their course still is making the money when they're not necessarily showing up for their clients in different ways. Yeah. So that is a huge factor. Yeah. So getting back to your initial question, like how do you know if you're right for a digital course? Well, you have to, I think 
everyone has a digital course in them. Yeah. I don't necessarily think everyone should create one, but everyone has a digital course in them. So the first thing is to think about where is your expertise, knowledge, and know-how. Everybody has a 10% edge, meaning you know something that you could teach other people and you just need to be 10% ahead. And when I say that, I hope a lot of people listening kind of take a sigh. Yeah. You don't need more certification. You don't need more education. You already know certain things that other people want to know. They could be as simple as how to potty train your child. Right. Maybe you have a special technique yes. that you use for that. It could be more elaborate with leadership goals or marriage counseling, but everyone has some kind of expertise. So you're looking for that 10% edge. And the way you decide it is, have you gotten results for yourself or for somebody else? And if the answer is yes, you have a topic you can teach. Okay, so that's this is, the first thing. This is huge for people because I so often see people, and we've got the comparison game going on on Instagram mm -hmm. or social media, and say, oh, well, look at all these people. They're so much better than me. They're more experienced. They have their credentials. They have more followers. They've been doing it longer. And what the way that I say it, Amy, and I've said it this way for years, is you don't have to be the best to add value. Exactly. You, you are ahead of someone. Yes. And so all those people behind you would benefit from what you know, what you can do, your techniques. And I love how you just lower the bar of intimidation and go, there are people that you can serve that are not as far as you are. You yes. don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the Olympics. You don't have to be exactly. the very, very best, but you're ahead of someone. And I love that you said that. There's something to be taught by, let's say, an Olympic athlete, but there's also something about being taught by someone who is 10% ahead of you, and they can relate to where you're at. It wasn't right. too long ago that they felt all those emotions, all those fears. So my students who teach people that are just a few steps behind them, they have beautiful connections yeah. with their students because they get them. So yeah. there's a power in that as well. Yeah. Okay. So someone is thinking through and they're like, okay, you say anybody can create a course. What about the people? Because I have a lot of my audience that's like this. And they are introverts. And like, yes. Oh, Amy, I <sighs> could never be on camera. Yes. I could never speak. I could never have a microphone. I just, I'm so uncomfortable. I don't like the spotlight. Like the whole idea of an online course immediately intimidates them because of the delivery. So talk a little bit about that because you yes. even have an uh, introvert in you. Like you're yes. not as extroverted as I think people no, think you are. Absolutely not. So I was going to say, I know it doesn't look like it. I do a lot of video and I'm front facing. I'd give anything not to have to be on video. It's not something I love. Yeah. I am an introvert to the core, and I really have to, you know, find the courage to show up in the way I do. But first of all, I know my why. I want the freedom. I want to work when I want, how I want, where I want. I don't want a boss. And so if it means I've got to show up in a certain way, I'll figure out and find the courage to do so. But I have good news. You do not need to be on video to have a successful digital course. I have two girlfriends that I talked to in the last week that both of them have made millions with their courses wow. over years. Their course is slides and audio. Mm. So they're not on camera. They are not showing up dancing on social media. They don't have, yeah. at the time, they didn't have huge followings. They've yeah. grown since then. Yeah. Courses allow you to grow online, but they keep it super simple. Okay. So that's another thing. You do not have to be forward facing on everything. Yeah. You do not have to be perfect on video. You just have to be willing to teach what you know. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, what about the person that is, because I'm thinking of all the different audiences yes. that really could create a course, but they think they can. So yes. I want to I talk to them, like, you can. Okay, what about the person that is challenged with technology? Ooh, and they're like, I love uh, this one. slide, Amy, did yes. you say slide? I'm sorry, can we get a <laughs> notebook and I write down my notes and hold it up? Yes. Like, uh, how do I clear you to slide? Okay. So just the whole idea of the technology side, editing and lights, all the things, that just feels really intimidating. And so it might feel like a barrier that they couldn't do it. So let's yes. talk about that. Most of the people I teach how to create courses are starting from scratch. So they have never done anything like this. And almost all the language I use seems very foreign to them. When I teach my students, we have a glossary because I'm not going to assume that they know all this. We did not learn this kind of stuff in school. So technology often comes up as one of the barriers. When I started creating courses 15 years ago, we did not have the kind of technology that we have no. today, right? Right. And so I have identified different tools and resources for somebody who doesn't know coding, doesn't right. know how to put together a website, right. and can do it on their own. Because I also work with a lot of solopreneurs. So all this to say, there is technology that has become so much easier and very cheap yeah. to use, and you can absolutely figure it out. Yeah. And I have seen people of all ages, not that when you're older, you can't figure this out, but there was a woman that she was 70 years old in my program and she figured out 
all the technology. And she always said, if I can do it, <laughs> everyone can do it. Yeah. So it's knowing that, okay, this is important. You might not know how to do it. And when you start out with the technology, it might feel very foreign. But as long as you say, I'm going to figure this out yeah. and I don't have to do it perfect, you will absolutely be able to move your way through the technology. It's so much easier than you think. Yeah, I love that. And I, I didn't plan to ask you this, but I feel like it's really relevant to what we're talking about. So I want to camp here for a second. When, when we talk about the technology, we can make a list of all the reasons why we can't create a course and yes. why this is intimidating or it's scary or whatever. And, you know, going back to when I left Ramsey and I was creating my first course, I was getting really, really, really tight on timeline. And so I was coming into August. I knew I wanted to launch it in September with like the fall and that's a great time to launch. And so I was getting tight on timeline and realized I don't have time to shoot it and edit it and upload it in the time frame that I wanted by the time my kid's getting out of the house and going to school because yes. with summer ending and I wanted to launch in September. And so I was really stressing about it, Amy. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, I don't know how I can't get this turned around and all the things. And then I thought, they're not there for the production. Yes. They're there for the content. Yes. They're there for me. And my content is good. My yes. content is solid. So like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to lead it live. And so I created links and led the course live. And I thought I this that. is going to be a great rough draft for me. It's real value to them, but I'm able to see, okay, what do I need to change about this course before I pre-record it and actually sell it in the spring? And so yes. I did it not, not like a test, like it wasn't real. It was real, but I was able to answer questions live. I didn't have to worry about pre-recording it. I didn't worry about memorizing scripts or editing or any of that cost. I just said, here's the link, show up live. I answered questions. They loved it. I was able to get testimonials and reviews from that round, that class. And then I went back, created scripts, recorded it, and uploaded it in the spring. And so if there's a barrier to the technology, there's creative ways around it. You, you don't even have to edit it if you don't want to. You could literally show up live. And if you've got great content, people are there for that. They're not there because your makeup's cute. I'm so <laughs> glad you brought this up. You are so right. I really teach my students to do their first course live like that if they're willing to do so because you're so right. The editing, if you record it live and then they get the replay, they know it's live. So That's mistakes right. are expected. Right. So now you just cut all the editing, right. time, cost, That's whatever right. comes up. I love that you said that. There are ways to just make this simple. Also, you could get on Zoom and record slides and audio, right. and you can have a full-on course just by using Zoom. That's right. And most everyone has a Zoom account. That's right. So I love to let it be easy. Mm -hmm. I'm also a baby steps kind of girl. So let's start out with a simple course. Let's not think we have a full-blown course with 10 modules and 100 videos. Right. Not necessary. I have students who have really simple courses that have done really well. So we can make this easy. Yeah, and people often really appreciate the simplicity. They yes. don't want more. They get overwhelmed with more. So when you give them five simple steps or you know seven steps, they're like, oh, thank you. I can go act on this. They're not overwhelmed. It's funny. You and I were talking when we went to lunch a couple months ago here, and I just come from a live coaching session. And I was like on this high, you know, after yes. like you've got all this energy. And I said, I think I'm better live. I was like, I think I said that <laughs> yes. to you. I was like, I was like, I'm funnier in improv. There's there's a great benefit to being live. Yes, there might be mistakes, but people kind of love it because yes. you're human. They love it. And they relate to it. But also I come up with things on the fly or I have more personality live than I do. And I'm like, Hello, everyone, and welcome ah, to, right? You're like, so right. Yes. There's been a bit to both. Your personality will shine through. Yeah. And so I love to just put it live, and then it's recorded, and you can get that out there, and you could sell that recorded version after you do the whole live experience, right. or you could come back and write the scripts That's and right. make it better. So you've got options. It's funny. I, we are right now in the middle of editing a course I ran live because I love doing it live first just to to see how it, how it lands and yeah. so on. And it's called Content Creator Academy. I ran this course live last fall. And right now we're editing it to become an evergreen course. Yes. And we're just taking out a few time references. Oh, the Q&A after or last week I said. We're just taking those out. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, the style is so different. The style is so just like personality, <laughs> like just hanging out. And it's fun. Like yes. it's got an energy to it that you don't have when you're like, and action. Like, yes, you're, <laughs> you're so right. Nervous. And I love that you just let you go with the flow. Yeah. So people see you and you're polished. You're so successful. You've got it together. But you also love to kind of be casual and yeah. go with the flow. And I think you're showing other people they don't have to have it all together to put together a course. Yeah. And I think so often we will wait until things are perfect to do anything. Yes. And what I want everyone to understand is you and I started somewhere Every book I've ever written, Amy, started with sticky notes on a wall, like mapping. Yes. It, it, the 
impressive things start as unimpressive things. It starts as a word doc. It starts as a scrappy video on Zoom. It starts with you yes. practicing in front of your dog. It's yes. okay. We all do that. It's so true. It starts with a voice message that you send a girlfriend right. to say like, I've got this idea. This <laughs> right. crazy. Right. So let it just start to flow and come together. And there is no need that this has to be perfect or polished. Yeah. I have seen courses that the person's not necessarily great on video or they don't have the perfect voice, but the content is good and yeah. they're willing to teach what they know. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting. You talk about this a lot. I know our um, friend Jasmine Starr talks about this, but when you show up authentically as yourself, mm -hmm. you attract people that like you for you. Yes. And then it's so great because you're not trying to be some curated version of yourself. You can just be who you really are. And so you can really be that. And it's not this pressure to maintain a certain perfect look because there's other people going, oh my gosh, she has glasses and greasy ponytail too. I can show up as her or, or that mom struck, that mom has a baby in the background screaming, whatever the thing is, yes. they will relate to the realness. And I think that you will attract people just like you that love you for you and you don't for have to be sure. someone else. You don't. I think it's so funny when I have technology issues, which I do, I'm not a super techie mm -hmm. person, so I can't figure something out or it's not working and I'm live on video. Mm -hmm. My team will remind me afterwards, everyone loved it. That's right. They loved that you That's couldn't right. figure it out because they said, oh, I know it's not just me now. That's right. So That's the mistakes it. also bring people into your community in a way that they connect with you. So yeah. it's okay to make them. Yeah. There's a humanity to it. Yeah. Okay. So someone has a business right now and they're like, wow, this, I would love to create a course. You can make a lot of money. You can have residual income. You can be on vacation and your course is selling. How does someone figure out where this fits into their business? If you have an online business, it may be really logical, like, okay, I'm a coach and I'm going to yes. create a course. But what if someone isn't really sure? It's not as cut and dried of like, okay, I have a you know, coffee shop or I have yes. something that's not as obvious of what a course would be. How do they brainstorm that to figure out what would that look like? So if you have a business that doesn't necessarily seem to fit with a digital course, I want you to think about what is it that you would love to offer that you just can't in the capacity that you do? Okay. So for a coffee shop, one of my students, she wanted to teach other people how she's making all these different coffee drinks and her little specialty and she's these recipes. And she thought, I could do that. People want to know. They want to be their own barista at right, home. Right. So she created a very simple course. It was $100 just teaching people all these different recipes from her coffee shop. People loved it. First of all, her clients loved it, her customers, yeah. when she started saying, I have this course. But then she started to go beyond the coffee shop. It's a really cool thing when someone in Wisconsin buys your course and you're in California. Right. Like You're like, wait, I, I, yeah. I moved all the way into right. another state like that. So finding something that you wouldn't normally do in a coffee shop, but you have this idea, this passion, this interest, you could do it that way. Here's another example. Let's say that you are a coach, you are a weight loss coach or a uh, marriage coach, and you work one-on-one -on -one with people. A lot of my one-on-one -on -one, uh, students think, but this won't work in a digital course because when I work one-on-one -on -one with you, I'm asking you so questions. Customized, customized, personalized. Yeah. Pitch and catch. They're like, that would never work in a course. And what I tell my students, and I've seen it work uh, so many times, there is a formula that That's you right. use. There is a template. Principles. Yes, yeah. there's principles that come out. There is no way that every single person you meet with is drastically different. You pull from the same exercises. Right. You try the same different content that you've used for other people. Right. That is a course. Yep. That means that you can still coach one-on-one, -on -one, usually take less clients and increase your prices. Right. And now you have a course to people that can't afford you or are not in your area. Yeah. So that works really well. An example, one of my students, Adia, she's a psychologist, and she meets with people one-on-one -on -one in her office, but she wanted to create a course on confidence for women. It was something she's passionate about. She sees it comes up in her therapy all the time. So she created a course specifically about confidence for women that she sold in addition to her private practice. Now she has two streams of revenue, and she gets to talk about a topic that maybe she doesn't always get to talk about in her sessions. Yeah. I love that. Okay, I want to talk about one thing that might be a fear people have when we're talking talking about this okay. because I've heard it before in multiple coaching sessions. You've got the coffee shop lady. Okay. This is an extreme example. Even the coaching, you could do it with confidence. And she thinks, well, if I teach them how to do it, they won't come buy my coffee. Okay. Oh, can we talk about that? Because yes. there's a scarcity mindset that I'm going to cannibalize. I can't teach yes. them how to do it. I can't teach them how to do makeup because then they won't hire me as a makeup artist. Yes. Can we please address that? Because yes. I know they're thinking it. I get this a lot with um, my students who are website designers. Yep. If I teach how to create a website in a course, I will not get any clients. Mm -hmm. And here's the truth. I've seen this over and over it, again. I know. There are certain people that want to go directly to the source and have you do it for them. Right? I am that person. I am too. I will pay you. I don't want to do it. I 
I don't want to do it. No. There are so many people that do not want to spend that kind of money, right, right. feel like, I want to do this. I can figure it out, but I need some guidance. Right. There's two different kind of people, and That's they right. thrive in this world. Both That's are right. really, um, you can find them all over. That's right. So you will get a certain type of client in your one-on-one, and you will also get a certain kind of client that wants to learn from you in your course. That's They're right. not the same people. That's right. So now you have two different client bases. I love that, and I just want people to really get it. It's a completely different audience. Yes. You can put your podcast on podcasts and on YouTube. Yes. And it's a completely different audience. I'll give you a real life example. I have a YouTube channel. If you're watching this live on video, this is on YouTube. I will not touch this channel. Do you know how many video, how many videos and free resources there are on how to manage your YouTube channel, Amy? Yes. Like 9 million? Yes. I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to see it. Yes. I don't want to touch it. I'm busy. Yes. Okay. But I hired a woman that is literally managing the entire channel for me. That is me. I'm that audience. But there's someone else that's going, hey, I don't have the budget or I want to learn YouTube. I want to figure out all the technical aspects and they want to consume, you know, whether it's a course or the free resources or whatever. It's a completely different audience. And so I just want people to be free to, you can build both. You can have your course that serves the masses and you can charge more than for your one-on-one because now it's a premium to get you one-on-one to do whatever the thing is. Exactly. And be careful with the mindset. You want to have an abundance mindset. There are over 7 billion people in this world. I promise you, you can find both subsets of wanting to do it their own and wanting you, them to hire you. But you have to believe that there's enough people out there that would want this. Right. And so that low vibe thinking of, what if they don't come to me? That's not going to serve you. Right. What if a lot of new people come into your world? Here's another great thing. Let's say you have this course where you're teaching, let's say, website design. I can promise you people will buy the course and then think, you're great. You're teaching this great. I want to work with you one-on-one. 100%. It happens You all will the get time. more clients. You will get more clients when you have a course that that is literally what you're doing in your private practice or whatever it might be. That's right. It just increases your credibility. Yes. Okay. So speaking of the scarcity mindset, let's just go on another thought that people have because I've heard it a million times and I, I get on my soapbox on this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit this one out and let you get on your soapbox on this. Um, what if someone else is already doing it? Oh, yeah. Someone already has a course on that, Amy. Yes. Someone already has a course on coffee beans or confidence. Yes. <laughs> so I guess I should Absolutely. Have okay. I want to go back to, <laughs> I want to go back to the 7 billion people in this yes. world. Yes. And there is a nobody on this planet that is going to do it like you. Preach. That's right. People want your personality, your style of teaching. And if you're willing to show up and foster those relationships, you do not have to worry about how many other people are doing it. You need a tiny sliver of the internet to pay attention to have great success with digital courses. That's what's so exciting about it. When I came on the scene 15 years ago, I used to teach Facebook marketing. And 15 years ago, it was a wild west with social media. Everyone in their mother was a social media manager with no experience whatsoever, including me, to be quite honest. And we all just kind of figured it out at a time when everyone seemed to be a social media manager. I just figured I will keep showing up. I will create the content. I will give the value. And I kept going, going, going until I became one of the best of the best to do what I do. So it takes, you want to create your own content. You want to put yourself out there and just remember you need a tiny sliver to pay attention. It does not matter at all if other people are doing it. Actually, if they are, I love it because if someone successfully is doing it, ding, 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 you can make money with it. It's proof. The the idea, the concept is proven. I love that. I tell people all the time, there's room for you too. There's room for you at the table. There's room for you in the marketplace. There are people that that you can reach that no one else can reach. No one can do what you can do like you can do it. You know, the example I share with this, which I'll just share just because it's a powerful visual. When I launched my first book, Business Boutique, in 2017, I would, this was back when we did like book tours. You remember, you know, going around to bookstores and signings and the whole deal. And I would always get this question. I have this business idea, but someone else is already doing it. And this was always my answer. We're in this bookstore. There's, you know, a couple hundred people. And I said, look around this bookstore. How many books are in here? Yes. Hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. I don't know. I said, but you're sitting here holding mine. I was like, it's not the best book. It's a good book. It's going to help you, but it's not the best book in the world. Yes. And yet you're here holding my, that's because God has given a group of people that I can help in a way that only I can help them. And I was like, the same is true for you. So I just, I love this reminder because I know that insecurity, imposter syndrome, these things can creep in when we're talking about the potential of courses, the possibility of growing your business, having the freedom, getting a maternity leave. And they start to think of all the reasons why they can't. I just want to debunk some of these myths that get in the way because the truth is what you and I know from experience and from, you know, other people we've learned from, there is room for you. You don't have to be perfect. The technology doesn't have to be perfect. You can start scrappy right now today and figure it out. That's what most people are doing. Start scrappy. I love that you say that. And something that you brought up that I think your audience would really just 
it would make sense to them. Before we started, you said a beautiful prayer over me, and I appreciated that. And one thing you said in the prayer was, please let us reach the people that need us mm-hmm. most. Let mm-hmm. us find them. Mm-hmm. And if you really, truly believe that you want to serve people and stop worrying about how many people will buy the course, will enough people see it? Right. Am I doing something that everyone else is doing? But instead, I have something really valuable that other people will find value in and I could teach and support other people. Let's focus on those that you serve. And I promise you, you will not go wrong. And so having faith that the people that need you will find you, there is part of that. That's the stuff I can't teach, but it's there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. Yeah. It, it, I learned that with speaking years ago where I remember it was one of my very first speaking events, Amy, and and speaking is one of the most vulnerable. You're on stage, you're putting yourself out there. You know, there's a lot of ways we do this in business, but speaking is so vulnerable when you're live on stage. And I remember it was one of the first events I spoke at for Ramsey. And afterwards, you know, you get the survey results or whatever. And I was so new in speaking. So I read the results. And of course, it's like 97% positive and then like 3% Mm. we didn't like her. I don't like whatever. And Mm. of course, we all struggle with like, how do we deal with criticism or whatever? But I just decided to flip my focus from the 3% to the 97% because, yes, there's probably going to be 2 to 3% of the world that doesn't get it, doesn't like you, isn't sad, whatever. But if you focus on the people you have to show up for, then I'm willing to walk back on the stage, launch another course, put yourself out there in business, whatever the thing is, go live on Facebook, put yourself out there and just keep showing up because you realize who you're fighting for. You're not fighting for the 2%. You're not fighting right. for the critics and complainers. Exactly. But there, there's, a, there's a mom that wants to leave corporate America that wants to have freedom for her kids. It's like, I got to show up for her. You got to yes. show up for her. Getting so I'll cl- withstand the haters so that I can get to her. Exactly. Getting clear on your why. Why do you want it? Why does it mean something to you? It's not like you wake up in the morning and think, I want to create a digital course. You wake up in the morning thinking, this is what I do. I wake up in the morning thinking, there's a woman in a cubicle right now that's not getting paid enough. She's ignored and she has great ideas. And the world is never going to see that unless I help her get out of that cubicle, get her ideas and knowledge in a course and get it out into the world. So I feel charged by that why. Right. So when it's hard, when the technology breaks, when I'm not really sure what the next decision I need or next action item, I remember her. And I know a lot of people listening right now, they know who they want to serve. Mm -hmm. They feel called to do that. So we got to focus on our why. Yeah, that's so good. And it does. It helps you withstand the low days, the technology, the problems, the imposter syndrome, those voices of doubt that creep in for all of us, Amy and I as well. It creeps (laughs) in for all of us. For sure. Um, Okay, let's get practical with this because the idea of a course, even if we shot it live and it's super scrappy, Mm -hmm. it's on Zoom, we keep it easy. How how much time and effort does this take to maintain in real life to get good results? Like, let's get practical. Oh, with, like, this. um, what what are what are we talking about in terms of like effort, launch time, marketing for it to be successful, yes. and make it worth our time? Okay, so let's pretend that we're going to create a very simple course, something small. We can build something bigger after we get some feedback. So you build that course, and I usually I say sixty days. Give yourself yeah. sixty days to put it all together. But I have a little secret. I teach my students to outline their whole course. Then they sell it and to make sure they make money with it and don't waste their time. Once they've sold the course, now they're going to create it, like you said, live week after week after week. So if you have a four-week course, you have the outline. Now you sold it. It's not created. This is very shocking for a planner like you right, right now. I, I know. Like, you're very nervy right now. I'm, I'm very proud of you. This is I know. <laughs> and this is how I did my first course. So I, I know, uh, and this is how I teach my students because- A failure to launch is a big thing. Actually putting it out there, they have the course, but they never put it out there. So I said, I don't even want you to have the course done. Fully outlined, really fleshed out. Now you know what you're selling, what's in it. Sure. You sell it through a launch, and we can come back to that. And then, like I said, now you're going to record it week after week live so that you do not have to put all this effort in to see before you see how your audience responds. So that part is important. The other thing is knowing how you're going to launch it. A lot of people come to me and say, yeah, I have a course and it's never done well. And I'll say, okay, so how are you marketing it? Do you launch it? No, I just um, put it on my website like – it's we precious. all know. That's precious. Yes, yeah, so precious. <laughs> and if they're listening to this if you podcast, build it, they, they know. will come. Yes. No, they won't. No, they won't. No, they won't. They will not. <laughs> so you need some mechanisms to sell. My favorite way is a webinar, and that might freak some people out when they hear that. But my first webinar is with Tony Robbins. And it was probably 17 years ago. And Tony was going to do the webinar, and we were practicing the night before. So I was in the San Diego office, he was at home, and we were practicing this webinar, and then we were done and I click a button, 
all good. And Tony says to me, Amy, why does it say this webinar has been canceled? I hit a button to cancel the entire webinar. Everybody who signed up for it and paid, his webinars were paid, got an email that says this webinar has been canceled. No. No, yes, the no. night before. It feels like and there it, should be more right? checks and balances right? rather than one button you could accidentally press. One button. <laughs> I, I hope they've changed that. Yeah. And it was late at night. It was already probably 10 yeah, o'clock in yeah. the office. I stayed up all night with the technology sure. company to get it back up. It was horrible. But I'm here today. That's right. I lived through it. Yeah. So knowing that what if I make all my money by doing webinars, that's how I connect with my audience. Imagine if I said after the Tony incident, I'm never doing a webinar again. Right. I literally wouldn't be sitting here with you. Right. So I love webinars. I teach webinars in a way to make it easy. But let's say someone doesn't want to do a webinar. They could do um, a challenge a boot camp. They could do a sales video online. Of course, you're going to use social. You want to start growing your email list. There's so many different ways to sell your course, and you could try different ways. You could do it live. You could do it automated. So I always say, do the thing that you gravitate toward the most, and then as you get more experience, you want to layer it on and add more. Yeah, I love that. The other thing, talk a little bit about, we don't have to go into launches because that could be its own conversation, but talk a little bit about the importance of urgency and having a deadline. Because I know some some people do. They like they they've been talking about their course for like ten years, yes. and there's no deadline, so no one's buying. Yes. There's no reason to. Okay, I'm a huge, huge uh, uh, fan of urgency and deadlines. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, you say, okay, my course is for sale, and it's uh, going to be for sale for seven days. So we're doing a seven Sorry. day launch, and so every day when you move closer, you get to say, okay, we've got three more days, Sorry. two more days. That matters. The most sales you usually get are on day one mm -hmm. and day seven. Mm -hmm. So in day seven can be amazing if mm -hmm. you do this right. We do this thing where we'll offer on the, the final day one extra bonus. Mm -hmm. So everyone who bought gets the bonus, and everyone who's been on the fence also gets the bonus. And that's another reason to get out in front of your audience. So you need scarcity. You need urgency. Yeah. Another way to do that is if you're really new to this, maybe you just want to take 20 people. Some of my students call it a cohort. I'm going to do my first cohort. I'm going to take 20 people in my course because I want to give them live coaching as well or sure. group coaching. So the goal is 20 people. That that's a great urgency. I'm only taking 20 people. First come, first serve. Let's right, go. Right. So you can do it that way as well. So you can manage the people that come into your course. Yeah, I love that. And if you're leading a course live, then you have a built-in deadline because you're going live. Yes. So either they're in or they're out. Yes, that's great. And point. I love that. It just creates so much more excitement around it. And just in case anyone's thinking like, oh, that's just marketing tactics or manipulation. Here's the reality. Human psychology research shows Thank that you. if you have all the time in the world to make a decision, you will never make a decision. Never. So you're actually serving your audience by forcing them to make a decision. You're not forcing them to buy. Yes. You're just forcing them to decide by giving them a deadline. And you will see much greater results if they have that deadline. So I'm going to give you a little tip for Let's those who actually will take action and want to get their course out into the world. One of my most favorite things to do is on the last day before I close the cart and you can't enroll, I'll get on, let's say, a Q&A live and I'll say, why are you on the fence? I want you to type in, I'm on the fence because. I said, I'll never talk you into buying my course if you're not the right fit, but tell me why you're on the fence. And so people start writing everything. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I'm scared. I don't have enough knowledge. And I can address every, every single, single one. one of them. And sometimes I'll say, you know what? You shouldn't join that's my right. course. That's yeah. Right. And actually, that's a good thing that that's people right. see you not trying to do a big money grab. That's right. So I, I'm on the fence because is a strategy we teach. It works like gangbusters. Yeah. And if you if you begin to watch people doing this in the online space, you will see this is what we do. Yeah. So at the time of this airing, I recently had a guilt-free goals reset workshop that was open enrollment for my Goal Getters Club coaching group. Okay. It was open for a week. I did a workshop, a three-day workshop as a part of that. That's what that was. That's exactly what that is. It's seven days that it's open and so on. And so we're doing that. You actually, as an because you lead by example, right? Yes. Like you show them how you do this. So you have a boot camp coming up. Yes. And this is setting up for Digital Course Academy. And yes. so all of this is part of it. So tell them a little bit about your boot camp and how you're using this to lead into DCA. I will. And one of my most favorite things is I only teach what I do. That's right. So uh, you get to see exactly what I teach through what I do. That's right. And so once a year and only once a year, I do the Course Confident Boot Camp. It's five days live. I'm live in the group and I'm teaching the first steps to get started with your course, the decisions you need to make, the things that will stop you in your tracks. We're going to get past those, the type of course you should create, 
how much you should charge for your course. How are you going to market it? Starting to think about those ideas. And uh, other decisions that people don't even know to make, we address all of them in the Course Confident Bootcamp. And it's for anybody who's a little bit curious, like Mm. maybe a course could fit, people that want to be a part of a community of other people who are starting to create their course as well. And for people who overthink things and get way too deep in the weeds or just don't have any idea where to start. Right. It's course confident. It's my most favorite thing I do. It's $47, one of the cheapest things I offer all year. And I promise you, you will walk away with clarity and confidence for your first course. Yes. So if you want to join that, it's getcourseconfident.com. But here's what I want you to see. Amy is pulling back the curtain on how she does what she does. And I do the same thing. We teach you what we're doing because it works for our business, but we're also teaching while we're actually doing it. And so I love that they get to watch that. I tell um, my audience, for example, I did a um, a business bootcamp episode on lead magnets and I taught them, I was like, here are different examples of lead magnets. If you go to christywright.com slash free, I've put all my lead magnets there. Sign up for some and watch the confirmation page. Watch the email journey that comes to you afterwards. Study what I do because there's intentionality. Yes. You can watch it in real time. And and sign up for Amy's email list or Jasmine Starr's email list, Jenna Kutcher's email list. Sign up for these email lists so you can watch. Oh, they got a launch coming up. Oh, Mm. workshop. I see what you're doing, girl. Webinar. Okay. I you love doing that. Yes. yes. And then you can learn from watching someone do it well while also understanding these are the steps that I need to take if I want my course to be successful or yeah. coaching group or whatever the thing yes. is. Okay. Let's talk about, I know that some people may start a course and they start it as this cute little side thing like, oh, I'll yeah. just kind of dabble in this. And you've had students and I've seen the same thing as well where the little side thing becomes the main business. Yes. Like, like they're like, oh, oh, okay. I, they see what I saw on the first day. It's like, This has potential to become the main thing. Yes. I have a great story. One of my students was a lawyer, and I know that's a big, fancy job, but stay with me here. She was a lawyer, and while she was a lawyer, she created her own time management system to get it all done because she was so busy. And it was a little quirky, the system, and very personal to her, but it worked. So she thought, I think I should teach other lawyers this. It's a little bit weird and different, but lawyers will get it. So she created a digital course teaching other lawyers. Actually, before she did that, she started to work a little one-on-one with some of uh, other lawyers to teach them the system. And she thought, oh, it's getting results for them as well. So she did a little of that. You can only make so much money when you're working one-on-one with a client. So she knew she didn't want to do that. And then she created a course on the system. She has now quit her job as a lawyer. She is going full force with her digital course and she made $213,000 with a course that was a quirky little time management system that worked for her and she thought it could work for other people. Right. So you never know where your course will lead you. I've seen this over and over again. I always tell this story and I've probably told it on your podcast before, but for new listeners, one of my most favorite stories is Danira. She was a baker. She made caramel candy apples from her home and sold them to people in her community. She lived in LA, single mom, three kids. And she did this, didn't make a lot of money, but she's so talented. So she decided to make a digital course on how to make caramel candy apples. Now I need to tell you, the caramel, it's I think at Smart and Final. Okay. It wasn't like her grandma's <laughs> recipe or <laughs> sure, anything, sure. but people didn't know where to get it. Right. So she said how to get it, how to cook it, how to make it beautiful. Right. And so she created this course. She made $60,000 on her first launch. Wow. She didn't have a huge email list. She didn't have a huge following, but she was really good at what she did. And she was willing to take people into her little kitchen and show how to do it. Yeah. She's gone on to do even bigger things. And she's, uh, this is what I love. I said, Danira, what's life like now that you have a course? And she said, I only take orders from people I really want to work with and I really want to make what they want, yeah. meaning she's now very selective. Right. That is a big deal to be only doing what you want to be doing. Yeah, I love that. And I think so often, too, it opens your mind. We talked about this even when we were praying before we went live. It opens your mind to what is possible because so often we think, well, I just make caramel apples. I just yes. do this thing. Yes. If you can if you can step back for a minute and open your mind to possibility that you haven't yet seen, you have no idea how it could truly change your life. Yes. I um, I had a client years ago, I've shared this story before, but um, she had a video editing company. And so she would do one-on-one video editing where she did it for them. Very successful, Emmy award winning, like super successful in what she did. But she said, I max it on clients. Like she charges a good amount of money, but she couldn't scale. And so we talked through creating a course. This was like, I mean, back in 2016, Amy, this is a million years ago. I love it. But I love this story for her because it was like this offhanded idea. It was a bonus session that I did uh, with a small group of coaching clients. And I I said, I talked her through like, you need to create a course because there's a whole group that can't afford you. She creates this course. That course is what took her business to seven figures, not 
the one-on-one, the award-winning, you know, editing. Yes. And so it could become your main thing. You never you, know. It may not be caramel apples. It yes. may be courses. And yes. you just don't know it yet. You've got to open your mind to the possibility of what you could do. Speaking of opening your mind, I have another story that I think will allow people to see how easy you can make this. I had two of my students, they were real estate agents in a small town, and they have a podcast teaching other real estate agents some of their strategies. One day, speaking of your lead magnet, one day they gave one of their Excel spreadsheets that they used to get more clients, they gave it to their podcast listeners in exchange for name and email. Their podcast listeners went crazy over this one spreadsheet that they had created. They loved the system. And they were like, wow. And everyone kept saying, do you have more? Do you have more systems like this? And they're like, we've got like 20 different spreadsheets. They made a course of just spreadsheets with little explainer videos. But it wasn't the videos. It was the spreadsheets that they wanted. They have made a million dollars in two years. Wow. They are real estate agents. They were not setting out to create a big course, but they saw a need. And so my point to that story is put out some content. See what people respond to. Never in their wildest dreams did they think they'd have a million dollar course with spreadsheets that they use in their own business. You just don't know. Yeah. And uh, what I love about this story is... They made that money without showing a single house. Yes. They made that money using what they already had. Yes. And uh, the other thing that I want people to really understand, and this is such another common challenge when you're putting yourself out there in businesses, it is so easy to undervalue what is common to you. Yes. Because it's obvious to you. You assume it's obvious to everyone else because your time management system is obvious to you. You assume it is because your spreadsheets are obvious to you. Yeah. You this little spreadsheet, who would want it? You value yeah. them. But what is obvious to you is amazing to someone else. Yes. What is common to you is unique and mind-blowing to someone else. And so just because you live with it doesn't mean that it has it doesn't have value. And I think yeah. every creator experiences this. I mean, Amy, every every time I sit down to write a book, I think everybody already knows this, right? right? Like they're, or, or I write a stage talk, they're, they're going to boo me right out of there. Like they're going <laughs> to, of course we know that. And it's not, it's so well received yes. because my content, my experience is unique. Yours is too. And when, when people understand, okay, this is obvious to me, but it's amazing to someone else. And you can get past that fear and put the spreadsheet out there. And then your audience is going to go nuts for it because they need it. That's the thing. Never underestimate something that you think is so very simple because so many of my students, that's where their magic came from. And also, it's important to remember the first time you put out a course, the first time I put out a course, I made $267 (laughs) and cried for a week (laughs) because I looked online and I thought, well, everyone else is making millions of dollars. They're not, but it looked like that online. Why wouldn't I make any money and I made 267 and cried. But I realized, oh, I did a few things wrong here. I didn't know about this or that. And I got back out there. Some of my students, the first time out wasn't as good as they thought. Yeah. The second time out blew their mind. That's right. And so I always say the first course launch, whether you do a boot camp, a webinar, video, whatever, is as much for you as it is for your students. That's right. You'll learn, you'll start growing your email list, you'll talk to students, you'll see what you're good at and what you don't like to do. Yeah. That second launch, game on. Yeah. And so give yourself a little space and time to figure this out. Yeah. I, I meant to ask you this before when we were talking about the boot camp or the webinar model, where you're putting in some time on the front end mm-hmm. in a webinar, adding value in sell, in build up to the launch. Talk a little bit about why we do that. Because I want people yes. to understand like, why would I do a webinar? Why would I do a boot camp or a workshop? Free or paid, doesn't matter. Yes. Why would we do that? And, and, and I think it's really important so that they know the value of it. Okay. So a few reasons. When I ever do a webinar, my webinars are free. My boot camp is a little different, but a boot camp, a webinar, I say this mantra every time. No matter if they buy or not, they walk away feeling excited, inspired, and driven to take action. No matter if they buy or not. So I always get in a place of servitude before I teach anything. Mm -hmm. And why I do webinars is probably for a good 45 minutes, I give immense value. That's right. I They walk away, no matter if they buy or not, thinking, wow, she delivered on what she said she would. But while I'm doing my webinar, they get to learn about me a little bit and my success. They also see my teaching style and my personality, and they know that I'm there to serve them. So when they offer them, hey, if you're ready to go to the next step with me, here's what I got. They already have built some trust with me, right. and they see that I'm the real deal. 
That's why I love boot camps. I like to prove to them before I ever ask them anything in return. I always say I earn the right to sell because I give immense value first. Yeah. And it feels good to me as well. Yeah, absolutely. I used to use this silly example when we would open the Business Boutique Academy back at Ramsey. It was my coaching group at the time. And I would do you know live sessions all week and do coaching and do workshop, all the things. And by the end, right when we're getting ready to close, I, I would use these examples like Costco. Like you go to Costco and you tell the same. It's kind of a sample. Like it's yes. like, it's a sample. But at some point, like you got to buy the chips or leave. Yeah. Like we're not sitting here just eating the samples. Okay. I'm not going to show up live for free every day. Okay. Like yes. we're closing. Thank you so much. See you on the inside. But it does, it gives you this whole, whether it's a week or a few days to add value, add value, add value, earn trust, earn trust, earn trust. And then they're going, well, yeah, if I want to learn this skill, I want to learn it from this person yes. because you have earned the right to do that. You've poured into them without asking anything. At that point, you're just giving value and they're going to walk away equipped, ready to do something with it. Absolutely. You will become their go-to person. And that's what's most important. So the more generous you can be that's leading right. up to selling your course, the better. That is all uh, trust building. Yeah, I love that. And and even when you think about it, if, 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 when in doubt, over-deliver. Yes. Over-deliver. Don't worry about, oh, I got to keep this behind the paywall. You have plenty of value behind the paywall. Give so much on the front end. I'm so glad you said that. It reminded me. One of the questions we get asked a lot is, how do you know what to put in a course and charge? Yes, I versus, get asked this all the right? time. Yeah. Versus what you give away for free. Right. So I actually have a simple formula. 20% of what is in your course, you can also give that away for free. Okay. So if you go into Digital Course Academy, you will. some of it will feel a little bit familiar, but a little bit different. And here's why. Let's say I teach you how to price your course in the boot camp. Okay. In my course, I will give you examples, more formulas, go deeper, have a calculator in there. Okay. So I just, I teach the same thing, but I go deeper in my course. But they're similar for yeah. sure. So 20% of what is in your course, use it as free content to bring your audience in. I have been doing this for 15 years. Never once has someone said, in your course, you teach this, but I saw it was free on your podcast. Never. Never. <laughs> so don't worry about a little overlap. It's okay. Yeah. It's funny. I love I love hearing how other people answer questions yeah. and teach stuff because we teach such similar stuff. I've always said um, 30,000 foot view, 20,000 foot view. So like yes. at, the, at the podcast, it's a 30,000 foot view. If you're in my course, we're on ground level here, yes. you know, or coaching is like ground level. Exactly. So it's just, I love how we have these, yeah. you know, 20%. I love that. Um, okay. We have to wrap up, but I could ask you about this stuff all day. Before we get into wrapping up, talk to me about some course math because oh, yes. I want people to feel like, okay, well, it's really possible. Like, okay. like talk to me about what could this really do? Real numbers. Like you're talking about taking me away from my main business. I'm already exhausted, Amy. I'm busy. I'm stretched thin. I see that it's possible, but like, how, how, is it going to be worth it? So I like to start out with really conservative numbers. And this, this is so simple math, but I want you to really hear how, how easy it is for you to make money with the course. Let's say the course is just $100. A lot of my new students like to keep it simple like that. I don't want to charge too much. I want a simple course, $100. Let's say you just want to make $2,000. $2,000 for your first course, if you're doing it on the side and it's a small course, that's, that's good stuff. That's right. So all you need is 20 20 people to say yes, and you have $2,000 that you wouldn't have in any other area of your business. Now, we don't stop there. I just like simple math sure. in the beginning. As you start to grow your business and every time you launch, it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. You get known for the thing you're launching. 20 people becomes 40 people. Then it becomes 100 people. And you're starting to see, holy cow, as my audience grows, so does my wealth. So you can start out simple, but my students go from making $5,000 to making $50,000 on the next launch because they figured it out. But I like people just to, let's keep it simple in the beginning. $2,000 in one week? Yes, please. Yeah. But the, the opportunities are endless. But I just wanted to remind people. 20 people. You can get 20 people to buy your course. I have no doubt in my mind, especially if in the beginning I like getting super scrappy. We're emailing our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our friends and saying, I've got this thing. If you know anyone who wants it, please send them this link. That's right. We're doing that as well as using social media and an email list if you have it. That's right. Okay. Let's leave them with an action step of not only we want to talk about the boot camp, but also what is something that they can do to start to figure out their thing? I'm thinking of, I've got a friend, um, 
that it wasn't just her knowledge and expertise, because I know that's a piece of it where we could pull from that how to make coffee, you know, drinks and so on. But it could also be your story. It could be something you've experienced. My friend went through a really terrible divorce and she created a course helping people win their custody battle. It's literally called Win Your Custody Battle. And she's killing, she's doing amazing. And that's something like a really painful experience that she's turning around and going, I'm going to help other people go through this, you know, from something that I learned through my story. So how does someone figure out what should my course be? I've got a million ideas. How do I know what what's a good starting point for okay. a girl's course? The first thing I love to do is what do people ask you about a lot? Something in your life, like how did you do that? Or how did you figure that out? Or how did you get those results? A lot of people will start to ask or A lot of people, someone is asking them, how did you do that? Start to pay attention to that. Another thing I love is that I want you to text five of your friends, really good friends, and say, if I were to ever create a digital course, what do you think I'm best at? Like, what would I create? Because your friends actually have better ideas probably than you do because you're too close to it. Totally. And they might say like, well, first of all, I don't know how you put together those amazing outfits with just five different items every single week. You look amazing. Teach how you did that. For the record, one of my students did. She made bank. She started dressing her friends and then she created a course around it. So I want you to ask five friends. I want everyone listening, if you're you're just a little curious, be courageous to text five of your friends right now and say, if I ever created a digital course and taught something, what do you think I'm extra good at? And so that starts to kind of get the wheels turning as well. And then finally... Chat GPT is pretty cool. Okay. So I know this is uh, a lot of people are just like a little freaked out by Chat GPT. But if you just get in there and you say, look, this is what I'm good at. This is what I think I could teach, but I want ideas around this. What do you have? You're going to get a huge long list of ideas you didn't even think about. So there's ways just to get it going. But in the boot camp, we are going to focus on finding your right idea. I love that. There's a uh, course confidence sweet spot that I teach. There's four quadrants that I take people through in the boot camp to come up with the idea that will not only light you up, but will make you money. So we're going to go through that right away in the boot camp so that you walk away having an idea you feel really solid about. Okay, I love this because I tell people all the time, when you see it, like in your mind, when you can visualize something, you can get excited about it. It's really hard to get excited about something you can't see. So I love that in the end of this boot camp, they're going to have their idea. And they're like, oh, now I know it's possible. Okay, getcourseconfident.com is where you go to get your spot in Amy's boot camp. And she's going to teach you how to get started in your course, but also how to find your course idea, which is so valuable because then, you know, once you have your idea, you can take it and run with it. You are off to the races. So that's my most favorite part to start, but then we'll get into so much much more, you're going to leave confident about your course that you're going to create. Yeah. Amy, I have learned so much from you over the years. We've been such good friends and in very similar spaces. Yes. You have been such a friend to me in leaving Same. Ramsey, which is so scary to me. Um, but it's just been really cool to see now on this side of it, I'm creating courses and it has become by far my main business. Mm, I love and I that. just, so everything we're talking about, I'm like, yes, listen to her. Yes, preach. Yes, please do it because I see what's possible. And I have literally modeled what I've done in my business with my courses from your course and from being your friend and learning from you. So thank you for that. teaching me. Thank you for benefiting my audience. And just um, in addition to getcourseconfident.com, tell them how they can connect with you and your podcast and all the things that you're doing coming up this fall. Well, thank you. I have a podcast called Online Marketing Made Easy. We talk about a lot of stuff we talked about today. And um, I'm at Amy Porterfield on Instagram. If you want to send me a DM, tell me your idea for a course, I would love to hear it. But yeah, I'm all over in that way. I love it. Amy, you're so wise thank and you. you're so encouraging. And it just gives people hope that they can do it because they can. So thanks for being here. Thank you, my friend. Thank you.